And the Buddha says that the mind is the forerunner of all things. It's both empowering and scary. Empowering in the sense that if we want to change our lives, we can start from within. We don't have to wait for other people outside to change. We don't have to wait for our circumstances outside to be good. We can start where we are. And it's entirely up to us. But that's also the scary part. Because as the Buddha also pointed out, we don't really know our minds. We want happiness, but we create suffering. That's because of the ignorance inside. And our hearts and minds are capable of all kinds of things. As he said, the mind is more variegated than the animal kingdom. Think of all the different kinds of animals there are on land, in the ocean, in the air. And the different mindsets of each of those types of animals. Well, the mind, your mind, is capable of greater variety than that, good and bad. And it's very changeable. So here it is, something that can't be trusted, something that's in the dark, and it's shaping your life. That's the scary part. The other scary part, of course, is that look around you, thinking about human society as a whole. Change comes when everybody changes their minds. So the idea of an ideal human society is very far beyond our grasp. But we shouldn't let that discourage us. We can't wait for other people to be good, after all. You start within. You want to have your goodness be independent of the goodness of others. Your determination to be good has to be independent of the determination of others. And starting within means getting to know your mind. Now you don't just sit around and ask yourself, what do I really feel, what do I really think? Because the mind can lie to itself, and the things ultimately you can say, yes, I really do feel this, I really do think this, but is it something you want to go with? After all, if the mind is capable of so many things, good and bad, you can't trust everything that comes up out of the murk, or that when you shine a light down into the murk, whatever animal is down there is the one you're going to be able to trust. The Buddha's approach is to give the mind a task. This is why we meditate. We focus on the breath because it's close to the mind. And we give it the task of staying with the breath, getting to know the breath, being sensitive to the breath. And as you do this, other things will come up in the mind that will get in the way. There's a standard list of hindrances. And those are just five large categories your specific hindrances, your specific issues, will take their own shape. But it's by giving the mind something to focus on, right here, that allows you to sense these things when they come up. Otherwise, if you're just drifting around, it's like being in a boat on a river. You don't have any particular anchor to keep you in place. And so it's hard to tell when the current is coming from the left, when it's coming from the right, when you're standing still. Because there's no frame of reference. But when you have the anchor, you know now you're being pushed this way, now you're being pushed that way. And you want to make the breath as interesting and as comfortable as possible so you can resist the push. So you don't just simply fall head over heels into whatever state of becoming is being pushed around or being pushed on you by your greed, aversion, and delusion. So 
So this makes you sensitive and also gives you some resistance. Because the whole point of having the mind in charge, one well, of the benefits of having the mind in charge, come from directing it in a skillful way. Think of that question the Buddha has you ask, what when I do it will lead to my long-term welfare and happiness? That's the question that lies at the beginning of discernment. And when you keep that question in mind all the time, then you're following what he says is one of the first determinations, which is not to neglect discernment. All too often we have moments of discernment, moments of clarity. When you can see what would be in your long-term best interest, and then those moments get covered up. As something else comes in. You neglect your discernment, you act on other impulses. So here again, the practice of concentration gives you something you can rely on. You develop your mindfulness in order to stay here. It gets strengthened as you keep coming back to the breath, coming back to the breath. Your alertness as to what's going on get strengthened as you notice what you're doing in the present moment that's helping the breath, what's making it comfortable, what's making it uncomfortable. And you develop that quality of ardency, the desire to do this well, to stick with it all the way through. Those are the qualities you're going to need in order to read your mind, in order to not neglect discernment as you read the mind. So when a thought comes up, you get a better, better sense of where it's coming from and whether it can be trusted. You develop your standards, so you're not simply happy that you know what you really feel. You're able to judge what you really feel, and put quotation marks around really. You think of it more as a proposal. This is something that's being proposed in the mind. And you have the right to say yes or no. So it's beginning to know the breath that we get to know the mind. And as we get to know the mind, we get more control over it. Not control freak control, skillful control. So this force that's shaping our lives, the manoba mangama tamma, the mind is the forerunner of all experience, of all phenomena, it becomes less and less of a scary thought, because you're right here at the source, and you're learning the skills to direct it in the right direction. As for whether other people are doing this, that's what, the best way to get them to do it is to do it yourself and to be a good example. But you can't wait for others. You have your own issues of birth, aging, illness, and death. And those have got to take top priority. Because if you haven't worked through those, the Buddha says, they'll keep weighing you down, and making it easy to get diverted away from what is really in your true best interest, diverted through things you like, diverted through things you hate, diverted through things you're deluded about, diverted through things you, you fear. But the good news is that as you take care of this problem inside, make yourself a more reliable person in directing your own life, you also become a more reliable person to other people. This is how goodness comes out into the world. It starts with the heart. So have a strong sense of the importance of what you're doing as you meditate. You're training this source of the world. And John Lee says this 
is the real creator of the world. And you're taking it out of the darkness and into the light, where you can not only read it, to understand where it's coming from. but get more and more in control over where you want it to go and your ability to get it there. <laughs>